guys i am danny the doll and i am sophie joe and, and you, you are, are watching, watching sister sandals <laughs> guys this is a show where our voices can be heard and celebrated we have everything you need from hot juicy topics to deep discussions and as always they are from sister's point of view two sisters and sisters and speaking of sisters it is black history month as you know it so we're gonna get into some good things for this episode you guys so sit back relax and grab uh, a drink or two and we are going to dive into our first segment of a sip with, with sis. sis yes ding ding ding, ding. Uh, tonight, me and Danny the Doll are sipping on turmeric tea. Yes. Guys, uh, I really love the fact that us as black people are starting to become more knowledgeable about health. Yeah. Um, it, and shout out to my mom, honestly. For, yeah, I was going to say that. Shout out to moms because she put us on this tea centuries ago. <laughs> turmeric tea is very beneficial. Just if you guys don't know, for any of our listening audience, hey, each one teach one. Turmeric tea is very good for removing inflammation, diseases, bacteria out of your system. Yes. And uh, and it's really good for acne masses too. For those who got skin problems, girl, just throw that turmeric on. Yeah. And of course, for the, t- the traditional thing is you score, you can put it in your food. <laughs> Shout out to the Indians. <laughs> right, of course. So we are sipping on that. No, it is nighttime. Um, mm-hmm. So let's get into our topic of discussion for a sip with sis, gal. Since it's Black History Month, we decided to speak about the influence and impact of black, black culture. culture. Stop playing with us, please. Big respect on black culture. Now. Okay. Big respect. <laughs> Put some big <laughs> respect on that, okay? <laughs> okay, guys. Because so, yeah. if anything, and this is no disrespect to any cultures out there, because all cultures are beautiful in their own way, but when it comes to black culture... We are the most influential, impactful, and aspiring. Inspiring. Yes. Culture in the world. I mean, from the clothes to the jewelry, the fashion, the entertainment, the talent, the Food. health, the skin complexion. Right. Some of y'all out there getting cancer from so many damn suntans. <laughs> yet, <laughs> while we are all those amazing things, yet we are also the number one underrepresented, underpaid, under acknowledged underachieves in certain areas yes. uh, demographic you know in America or hell in the world or in America in the, I don't know I think in the world because they be treating us like shit in other countries do yeah. but that's another Sometimes, topic but hey yeah <laughs> um, yeah guys so as we know as me and Nail know we're obviously black um, of course there is a difference between black culture and like African, African culture, culture. Mm-hmm. of course you know we're not um, of course we are African American but unfortunately because we were were stolen fruit uh and we were brought here uh against our will we, we're not we don't have those connections to our right. original heritage so all we know is black, black culture. america yeah exactly and from that has stemmed so much beauty i think yeah i mean for decades and even though we don't have that strong connection to our people in africa their culture and their to me like their bloodline that has resonated over mm. to america you know the big bamboo earrings or um you know the full lips or even this was a now this is an old dance from like the early 2000s i don't know if y'all remember crunk dancing y'all remember the you know the crunk <laughs> dancing <laughs> Yeah, that actually originated from Africa. The men would gather in a big circle what? and push you, mm-hmm, push each other around, and and they have the big um, drums playing, and that's and they interpret it into, of course, in America they call it crump dancing. That's where it originated from. Wow. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, speaking of you know some of the our African features, uh, I think a lot of that has been now. What's the word? Not duplicated, but full lips not every not all black people but most black people have full lips even some of us have bigger noses larger eyes just larger features period and now we see that big lips in every demographic (laughs) child they get them things plumped up and i'm not mad at them but i'm just saying let's let's pay homage to the originators okay yes that actually reminds me of an incident y'all know i stay with the receipts and history y'all remember that time Kim K, um, she what was it? And it wasn't her fault. It was it was I society. Mean, about the oh yes, the her, it wasn't her fault. 
Well, I remember people calling it that, but she never called them that. Like the, the Kim K, like the vlogs were starting to give them a name, and and people was like, "Hold up!" Uh, oh, they're calling them straight backs. Or yeah, something. or, or and, and the Kim K braids, but people were like, "These no, are cornrows. These are cornrows. We've been rocking this, and now y'all want to put give it another name because somebody popularized <laughs> it in like uh, media. Yeah, and because the Armenian girl is rocking them. Don't get me wrong, she look cute, but uh. We did that first. And you know what? <laughs> and I don't mean to sound small-minded because I know everybody can wear their hair their own way. I know a lot of black people wear weave. And some may think that, you know, y'all don't want us wearing braids, but y'all are wearing hair like ours. I'm sorry. But I just, when it comes down to white people wearing braids, it makes me feel uncomfortable. You it know, does. I'm just being honest. Even Kim with the cornrows. I don't get, uh-uh. You know what? Yeah. You know what is even worse than that for me that makes me uncomfortable? I've seen white people with straight up dreads, and it bothers my yeah. soul. Because like, why did it dread up first of all? I, what? What? <laughs> and why? Like, what? And why? and why? Now, don't get me wrong. I know, like in the the rocker uh, emo type, or like those um skater boys, they have. She like, was a skater boy. She yeah, skating. they had like you know the spikes and different colors, or right. they have like the the wild dress. Or that's a little bit different. But I've seen some where you would yes. think it's like, sir, it's just kind of weird to me um but that's my opinion yeah now that's when we comes down to hair let's talk about black fashion yes. and influence and let's mm-hmm. not act like it doesn't exist because when it comes to fashion of course all people have their own sense of style but there's a certain like the song and beyonce song there's a certain way you know that we just do things and carry ourselves and put that on you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and i think that's very influential especially in the 2000s um yeah now I don't want to say baggy jeans was our thing. Well, it was our thing. I don't think the others appropriated that. I don't think they ever picked that up. Yeah, yeah. Not the baggy now, jeans. Now, some of some emo kids and some scatter kids, <laughs> they they they. <laughs> some of them emos. They wore the, they wore jeans back. Like yeah, they wore the, like the heavy set emo kids. <laughs> they wore the baggy pants in school. I remember. <laughs> they wore the thing, and them, them damn skater shoes that was uh, was too small. But yes. anyways, yeah. Um, but how else was our fashion like so influential i think a lot of it is um to me when we started doing not just with the hair but the fashion i was gonna say maybe like the long no not long the long nails but that's in that's it yeah because fashion yeah but i remember but in latin culture they do the like the little latina girls they have long nails too yeah and that's another we gonna get into that another time (laughs) <laughs> yeah. But um, besides that, I think a lot of it, with as far as talking about black fashion, it's not necessarily the pieces, but I think most people black people that, naturally have like a we have swag, a swag. Yeah. a je ne sais quoi. We could be wearing the same thing, but it'll look different. Once again, rest in peace, Nipsey Hussle. It's in you, not on, on you. you. So it's just something that naturally comes out with black people of having a little je ne sais quoi, like I said. And I think some others are a little maybe envious a little bit sometimes not all yeah all like um you guys remember justin bieber in his black days oh. uh <laughs> shout out to black justin days. yeah i remember him with justin the bus like justin was a whole light skin drake out here i really thought he was gonna end up with a black this, yeah this you know the snap back well, i don't know it's like 2012 year mm-hmm. if i was your girl boyfriend he was hanging girl. out with young twist and little twist little young twist money. and usher and all the people mm-hmm, that justin y'all yeah, remember that that whole black swag he had and then it kind of evolved as he got older. He went back to, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. But, you know, also it, with black influence, of course, we can't talk about that without mentioning talent and entertainment in the industry. Now, now, this is where I personally feel like it gets a little tricky because I've seen this online. Like, um, as my mom called them back in the day, they were blue eyed souls. So when it comes to like soul for music, like people, that man, da, 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 uh, the one that I'm recently died, I forgot his name, again. but you guys know that song. I guess you're wondering where I've been. Yeah, I always thought he was black. Jo- he was the black. George, yeah, but uh, another example, or like Tina Marie, just these beautiful, soulful voices. Even today, Tori Kelly, uh, mm-hmm. Chris Stapleton, you know, these people 
I've and I b- personally believe that they were just born with that beautiful soulful voice. It's not really a race thing, but then there are some who say today a lot of these people mimic what they think, what they see, what they hear. Oh, I grew up with a. Re- Aretha, but before they started listening to Aretha, they didn't really sound like that. They picked up on her soulfulness, and so their voice started changing. Started adding a bunch of and <laughs> they saw <laughs> a bunch of church runs. Woo! Right. At first were... <laughs> and, and we can peep, we can peep if it's authentic or not. Authentic. Yeah, we can know when you. Oh yeah, she was born with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then it's like, okay, uh, who, what black person raised you, girl? Right. <laughs> who have you been hanging around? Mm-hmm. But you know, I did want to talk about how because I it bothers me. Expect it happened especially a lot way back in the day. It's getting a little better now, just a little bit when it comes to you know African American people in the music industry putting out music, putting in the same effort, but not being awarded or appreciated the same as white counterparts. Let's talk. The Grammys were on the other week. We covered it. If y'all haven't checked out the deal, we didn't. That episode didn't come out. Mm -mm. But no uh, worry, we got y'all next year. Yeah, uh, (laughs) but even when it comes to like I said award shows um but I was just gonna say I know there were a lot of examples back in the day and not even just of course in real life you guys know Elvis Presley oh gosh they were, oh, that's a whole essay right there but you remember his song um Blue and no Hound Dog yes. and of course since the movie came out a lot of people were then educated on who actually originally put that song yep. out and rest in peace to her. She finally got her flowers. It was, it was not a, a black woman. Yeah, it was not Elvis. The same thing with the movie Dream Girls. Y'all, y'all remember, got me a Cadillac. Yep, and the movie's my favorite. If y'all didn't know, my favorite movie of all times is Dream Girls. <laughs> of course, Eddie Murphy. Was it Eddie Murphy? Eddie Murphy. And they had one. Got me a Cadillac. 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 Got me a Cadillac car. Two, two weeks later. Two seconds later. I've got me a Cadillac. Cadillac. <laughs> Look at me, Mister. Like, wait a minute, I'm a this? star. Like, and that's what we mean when we say cultural appropriation. But yet, they're gonna reap all the benefits of getting all the airplay on mm-hmm. radio time, yeah. getting paid for the gigs, and black people are sitting somewhere, you know, singing in a juke joint, hoping yeah. to get ten dollars that night. Right. <laughs> like the same with um the legendary Disney movie, The Lion King. If you guys um. Ever want to check out their documentary on Netflix? It's right there, honey. And they'll tell you the whole TN background. Y'all know the infamous song, In the Jungle, the Lion. And the other one, Miles a Day. Yeah, that whole little beginning, was. it came from this guy from Africa. He wrote it and everything, produced it. Honey, they didn't give that man a dime. And for decades, his children that he left behind, he died broke with nothing. And Lion King producers went on and made millions off that movie, as y'all know. And eventually, years later, the his offsprings they finally got the basically the reparations for their father's work that you know America just swept under the rug. Wow! Yeah, yeah, all these decades. So yeah, we I just feel like we have always had the sauce. We've had the talent naturally, God given, but we're always ripped off in the end. Mm-hmm. Like the guy said from the movie, um. The the new Candyman, y'all know it came out a few years ago. He said it in the movie, they love our talent, they just don't love us. Exactly, exactly. They love Come what sing we for me, Negro. Yeah, dance for me. Yeah, you but know. they don't love us. Um, but of course, you know things have changed. It's not as bad as it was back then. Or it's then. not as blatant. Blatant, yeah. There are some people who really do. I think like we get a little bit more appreciation now yeah, for the yeah. things we do because now because we're, we're speaking up yeah you know this new generation like we don't sit silent or we're scared if we say something that no nah, hey th- we made this yep <laughs> put our names on it this is black owned <laughs> exactly but yeah and it's it's okay to be inspired by black culture or any culture but yeah it's it's a fine line honestly you know between being inspired and just totally appropriating yeah, and even have you the- seen um Travis Barker's daughter on TikTok? No. Hmm. Well, look her up. Okay. I don't know what to say because she's a cute girl and I like her. But within the last year, she's definitely made one heck of a transition in her appearance and her mannerisms. Mm. So I'll leave it at that. Alabama Barker. Sorry, girl. Okay. It's giving Honey Boo Boo. No, Honey Boo Boo. Uh, whoa, whoa, Vicky. Uh. Close. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, I wonder what she's where she at right now. But one yeah. last thing I wanted to t- touch on with black culture, um, we can even talk about food. 
We didn't talk about food with black culture. We didn't talk about our lingo that a lot of people lingo, imitate. Lingo, lingo, dingo. Yes. Lingo. Cabin oh, lingo. I'm and... talking chingo. <laughs> no, but I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, like with our phrases or how we speak, you know. And, of course, that's a whole debate with the inner world, but we ain't here for that oh, right my now. Gosh. But y'all know the ones who don't need to be saying exactly. it. But anyways, I don't care how many black friends you got. I don't care if Harriet Tubman did your hair. We don't care. Um... <laughs> But yeah, you know the with, lingo. Yeah, with the no cap. Or uh, um, it's called A A V E African American Vernacular English. Yeah. Um, and now that social media is so big, now everybody of all races have access to how we talk, how we dance, how we dress. Well, yeah. So yeah. it used some of the, our lingo used to be just kind of within the black community, unless mm-hmm. you really in person hung around black people. But now it's publicized on everywhere so now certain people are saying certain words and of course we don't own these words yeah but sometimes it is a little cringe when you see someone of other race saying like uh so me and my sis we, yeah it's like sis is short for sister right. and we mean this sister so why are you calling your friend sis emily right girl that's not the same or the chat like all this i say cha all the time yeah. and they're like cha like girl please like, like you guys guys i feel so woke after going to this meeting it's like do you really know what that means no, no way do you know where it comes from no samantha or or have you just heard it around are you <laughs> and there's no like ill will ill feeling towards you hey yeah. I, I could only imagine wanting to fit in with the cool kids or yeah. wanted to be a part of something that seems so cool and, and so and, like and, yeah because let's keep it real black people we've been setting trends for centuries we've been the cool kids whether people want to admit it or not honey. right i'm just saying and y'all i don't know if y'all remember but this is when j-lo that's another topic um you I, if you guys remember this i mean this is a quote from years ago black girl magic you know it's something that started within the black girl community you know things that black women do when we when we do something successful like venus arena she was a, a example of black girl magic or michelle obama or whoever right um j-lo one time she posted this pic cute pic and she put on her caption bronx girl magic and it was just i mean it was just, <laughs> she, was, she got so much backlash she was like Girl, and then someone was like, "We can't have nothing, nothing." nothing. It's like <laughs> y'all want us around, Bronx? or y'all don't. Which one is? Yeah, it? it's like what the heck is Bronx girl met like? Girl, just no. put Bronx Judy from the block. You could have just went with that, right? <laughs> but yeah, it's just an example, like the the lingo, you know. Uh, interesting. But, hey. <laughs> but I understand how you know. Being no, super you said something about the food. Yeah, I was saying, um, food. Um, uh, Cause I mean we've got our different, of course you know, black people for decades we have our different ways of cooking and oh yeah, and a lot of that stem like soul food. Of course we all know stem from really just the scraps that our ancestors were left to yeah from... make a meal out of. But a lot of times now you go to fancy restaurants and they're turning to nice delicacies. You know oxtails that was really a, a poor man's food. You eating the tail of a of a, a yeah. cow. Yeah. Now it's like a super expensive thing. So all that just shows how they make money off of our thoughts and imagination and creativities. But once again, we're not paid. I'm wrap this up, guys. I think we pretty much covered the basics of beautiful black culture. And how influential it is. Mm-hmm. So be, t- uh, be sure to tune in next week for our new, uh, sorry, not new segment, but for another topic that we will be jumping into. Yes. So speaking of jumping into, sis, let's go ahead and jump into the next segment yeah guys this is nailed it or failed it it. all right guys so since we are doing it is black history month Mm -hmm. the shortest Mm -hmm. month of the year how funny anyways um so we are going to be doing nailed it or failed it for which i'm really excited about we're going to be covering 60s did we say 60s yeah 60s 70s 80s 90s and and 2000s fashion guys and uh let's get into the segment we're just going to be talking about if we was rocking with that 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 look back then or if it was like uh yeah now okay so we said 60s now of course 60s 70s and 80s was before our time right 90s babies uh first off i'm at the end of the 90s yeah let's make that clear (laughs) (laughs) not that it matters but anyways okay so yeah 60s fashion um black in black culture culture. yeah so we're thinking james brown 
uh with and i feel like in the 60s a lot of men wore suits like yes. i think they were trying to be taken serious because we were just kind of off the edges of what segregation yeah. and all that good yeah, stuff the, um, and bad stuff yeah you know the the black movements and the the riots the marches the, yeah, or we in the marches Jim Crow's, I, uh, yeah that was during that time and, but we were still finding it fighting it but you know but black people were trying to be taken as not slaves and pitiful poor black people but more as take us serious we're yeah. human just like you and, yeah so and even back then sorry I cut you all says but i was gonna say even back then of course a lot of not a lot of people of color had money to go get these fancy suits and the women with the dresses so you know we started making our own our own stuff yeah. i remember my mom used to tell me stories with my grandmother who made almost everything in the house like from the um the curtains. drapes, the curtains. She made all her daughter's dresses, prom dresses. You saw that stems from yeah back then, and so, so with the suits and stuff. I yeah. feel like black people weren't as creative and fun with their look back then, because like I said, they were trying to be taken serious. Yeah. So now, women in the big, um, not, like the dress. Ah, pictures up. So if y'all are, yeah. hey, if y'all are listening to us on uh, Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can definitely go to YouTube and watch us because we have some great graphics up showing you the fashions yeah. in these decades. We weren't up. wearing suits and pants. Women weren't we really weren't wearing pants mm-hmm. back then. And we we wore natural. Not not saying we we don't now, but we had more. We did more things with our natural hair back then. Like it was more presented. And back speaking then. of natural hair, that's we mosey. Oh well, do you think in the sixties fashion is it a nailed it or failed it for you? The sixties fashion, I have to. I I have to say it's a hangnail, and that's what we call it on the on this segment a hangnail when we when we're kind of torn between if they failed it or nailed it. And I'm I'm saying hangnail because with the some fashion. It, I, I wasn't really into, but the men with the suits and how they dressed back then with the with everything, I did like that. So right. I'll give it like a hangnail. I'm going to give it, um, that's tough. That's what I said. Hangnail. Probably a hangnail too. I yeah. like the, the point, the reason why they were dressed so serious and businessy. Yeah. Know? Uh, but the actual look, probably a fail. So speaking yeah. of natural hair, 70s fashion, mm-hmm. this is when we're talking about froze. We're talking about wide leg pants or elephant pants. We're talking about uh, wavy, groovy glasses, mm-hmm. platform heels. Black power was on and popping in the entire movement. So, uh, and you had, and of course you had the black entertainers of the '70s, yes. and we was out there booming. Honey, that's where Royal Soul came in. Yeah, we had Soul Power, Parliament. Y'all might be a little too young for that. Uh, Jackson Five. You had. Uh, Smokey Robinson. Patty LaBelle and I forgot the girls. Yeah, Smokey Robinson. All he those great people. I don't know. The uh Lana Richie, the Commodores. But yeah, like these and I was gonna say another favorite group, Earth, Wind and Fire. These I'm naming these big black entertainers from the seventies because they really put the fashion on for True. society then. Like True. Jackson Files with the fro and the matching suits and then who do we say? Um and then the platform heels. Yeah. For me, the 70s, I'm going to give it, I don't know, is that a fail? I'm going to give it a nail that because I'm a honey. Listen, my mom was just about to say this. And her hustles used to just down, honey, with the fro and the cute little matching bell bottoms and the, you know, all the cute stuff. And if you guys don't know, but that was the year Soul Train was introduced. So you really got to see black fashion oh, yeah. be put on a platform. And they was on that show. Oh, e. yes. Dancing, they knew in. they were gonna be on TV. Possibly, mm-hmm. they was dressed to the nines. Dark and... on news and not play. Rest yeah. in peace to him. Right. <laughs> so it's a nail for you for the seventies. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna mosey into the eighties fashion, and this is when we have heavy leather jackets. We have um, like yeah. the movie Grease. I think you know. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Pause. Did Did you give it a, the seventies and now to the photo? I did. You said never. No. 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 This one seventies is gonna be a nailed it for me. Seventies fashion nailed. Okay, so now our guys are moving on to the eighties, which is my favorite. Er, no, right. actually it's the nineties, but anyways. <laughs> so like I, the only thing I really know about the eighties fashion is leather jackets, motorcycles. <laughs> but I think I do like the style of the eighties. I think oh that's when like a whole bunch of color pop color and they have the headbands when mm-hmm. they work out the leotards. And the thick socks and yeah. stuff. Okay. 
Thick Socks, and then you know the B Boys, like New York put hip hop on during the eighties. Not when it your came name out. the B Boys, Run DMC. You know what I'm saying? Like, B-Boys, like, the boys would be dancing in the street and stuff. Oh, I'm thinking Beastie Boys. Sorry, my bad. But, yeah, people <laughs> in the street was uh, doing they Yeah, you know, locking and, 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 you know, break dancing and all of that. Boom was, That's what I was saying. Yeah, New York had introduced the world to hip-hop then. And so you saw, like, the Jerry Curls, the big boom boxes. You know, the Adidas was popping. Shout out to Ron DMC. They put that, they pretty much put that on, you know. Love watching Ron House then, growing up. Of course. MJ was the 80s and everybody wants to just like him with with the you know because he had his own style the gloves the hat the jacket that was, yeah that was the first time I think I've seen somebody um black actually well a celebrity or like an entertainer have their own the him but people like him and Ron MC have their own s- s- style that was so influential to the point that everybody wanted to dress like them yeah so that was that was really cool so for the 80s we didn't say too much about the women. I know how the men dress. I, I'm thinking color. like Whitney. I want to dance with somebody. Madonna. You said pop. Yeah. I'm gonna go big hair. Women were the big, the big '80s hair oh, back then. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we nailed right. or failed. It's a nailed it for the men back then, but I don't know about the women. I'm kind of on the feeling. I'm gonna say fail for them. For the '80s fashion, it's gonna be a fail for me. I'm not really into that Jerry juice dripping everywhere on them Jerry curls. So the 2000s, um, I'm gonna give it to. You know, I'm sorry to do this. I'm I'm gonna give it a fail. I feel like that was kind of our struggle era because at least I know in school, girls was we had like the skirts and the, are those jelly shoes? The jelly shoes and we used to wear like Jordans and shit with the skirts. <laughs> it's yeah. like we were trying to find our styles at that at that time. Yeah, trying to be like the people in the music videos or whatever. But it won't even the music videos. Some stuff just was not given. Was, right, like you look back now. Yeah, back then it's like oh cute, and then and now I feel it's like, like and also girl, if, why don't you use that much gel for this? Also, thing? yeah, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> that's when like because weave was out in the nineties, of course. But I feel like the early two thousands when weave weave as in not braid, so like straight hair that's mm-hmm. when it was starting to get its rise and it yeah, wasn't always remember, done right yeah you guys remember the rap where oh i was known for that rap boy rap. i used to get my hair done every two weeks with that rap okay the, uh, don't forget the, the bump the yeah, bump at bump. the end <laughs> <laughs> yeah Mm-mm. so not i mean early 2000s fashion for me it's 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 a failed yeah. and them big old clothes uh-uh <laughs> You give it a fail? Yeah, I'm going to give it a fail. So, for the 90s was a nail, and the 70s for me was a nail. Everything else was eh. nail. I don't even want to get into today's fashion. We're going to say that for another, t- another time. Guys, that <laughs> wraps up our segment of Nailed It or, or Failed it, it, which we love doing. That's so much fun. Yeah. Um, we hope you guys enjoy it, too. If you have made it this far in the show, be sure, if you're watching on YouTube, to subscribe, or if you're listening on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, give us a like. And we're also available on Instagram at Sister Sound Off underscore. underscore. And don't forget to check out our lovely Facebook page if you ain't got time for Instagram. It's yes. Sister Sound Off. That's, That's it. it. <laughs> so, guys, we are halfway through the show. Yes. And it is time to play on the dime because mm-hmm. I ain't got to rhyme because I'm taking my time. Guess what? It's time to get into Housewife Hot, Hot Minute. Minute. This is when Danielle gives me 60 seconds on the clock. And only 60 to recap the latest episode of whatever Housewife franchise show I'm watching at the moment. Right now I'm watching Real Housewives of uh, Beverly Hills. This should be fast because I don't have that many notes. <laughs> okay. Let's see if she can beat the clock this co- this time, guys. I know we did last time, so let's see how we do. And the clock starts now. All right, guys, in the latest episode, uh, we see that Kyle talks to Mauricio. They have a serious conversation at their bar about their marriage. As we know, they've been having issues, him cheating, them just growing apart as his real estate business grows. Um, She seems really sincere and concerned about the marriage, and Mauricio seems like he don't even care about... Not that he doesn't care, but he seems like it's not a big deal. He's like, we're fine, but they're really not. She's over here struggling. She didn't turn into a lesbian, low-key. Anyways, Erica Jane expresses how she's hurt and disappointed by the ladies not apologizing after she sort of kind of was found innocent in the whole uh, Tom Girardi million-dollar earring case. So she's sad that they didn't uh, apologize to her. Next, I forgot her name, but she's the esthetician, the only other black girl on the show besides Garcelle. Sorry, I forgot your name. Uh, She hosts a Mother's Day diamond event and this is when crystal expresses her appreciation for her uh and also this is when we find out that 
um oh what's her name oh jesus basically we're almost at the end of the season next week is going to be the season finale i can't believe it and i'm out of time all right i think that was pretty good i didn't have that many notes <laughs> y'all you know why because i fell asleep watching the episode and i was so embarrassed to tell y'all <laughs> hey it happens it happens but hey we got be through sure it. to come in next week to see me recap the season finale of real housewives of beverly hills guys yes, please tune in for that for all of our housewife fans right um so now that we have done that we are moseying into our next segment of who's making moves yeah y'all know the black <laughs> black folks we just gotta add that little one ooh, little razzle dazzle um guys this is when we take a moment to shine a light like danielle or danny the doll says all the time so much negativity going on in the world this is when we like to shine a light on someone who's making moves doing positive things and yes. just really popping it you know what i'm saying okay making those big moves and for this week we are shining a light light on our girl jackie Ina. oh my gosh if you don't know who jackie Ina is you're living Where under you the rock okay <laughs> like hello jackie Ina is a well initially she is a uh, beauty social media influencer Dig- mm-hmm, and um, digital creator yes but she is of course there's so many things beyond that and i really feel like she's like low-key like a legend in this game it's she like is. she's girl, been doing it a long yeah, time she's an og so jackie Ina started off um being a beauty influencer on youtube like almost what a decade ago she is now just shy of two million followers on instagram mm-hmm. she has a huge platform on tiktok of course um focusing on beauty but she is has tapped into so many other excuse me things <laughs> sorry yeah i mean besides her being a beautiful fiance and a, a best friend she's got some great friends by the way right. I've seen she and you know just um the people that she's partnered with her content is it's so think, crisp yeah and it's just it's so lovely her house is oh my gosh too. i love her <laughs> I think she has another page called Lavishly Jackie where she does like home content, yes. decorating, and organizing. Yeah, and it's it's amazing. I think that's what draw, drew a lot of people in too, just her amazing content. Like I said, she was a digital creator. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but one of... Lord, couldn't get my words out. But one of the things I do love about her also is she is a black-owned business owner of one of the best... Um, candle brands in the game and i know because i've got about six of them saved on my wish list it's her uh her candle company forever, forever mood, mood. Yeah. and when especially when jackie first came out with forever mood her and her fiance you know that had the internet in a it was we were shook because mm-hmm. we didn't see it coming but we know she loves smell she said it before she loves like anything that smells good fragrances candles all those good things so it made sense for her to do a candle line like if you follow her on her life as jackie page she's got like a whole uh department store of fragrances (laughs) so you know that she that she shows everybody and displays and buys And, uh, and the way she interacts with her fans or followers or supporters some people calls them it really seems authentic and just watching her grow from and she used to be in the military a long time ago hearing her story and how she was brought up and of course we've all had to go through things but to hear how yeah. she triumphed over all her obstacles and now yeah. she's Jackie Anna, okay doing okay. it like I mean and doing it well yes yeah, so many great things and I making mean, sales <laughs> and giving them hater sales oh <laughs> yeah because she has had a few haters child oh course, yeah and that's that's what everyone and she will get you together quick too yeah and, and, and shy away from the comments yeah and and she'll get you together and not in a, a a ghetto or you know disrespectful way she does it with grace honey she will get you straight with grace okay and i appreciate that and i love that she she'll give us a good you know a laid wig moment or uh you know braids but she also wears her natural hair yes. and, and and she'll wear a beautiful evening gown with her natural hair which is even great because i feel like sometimes when us you know we think we're going to a nice event we think oh let me get my hair done like weave wig because we for some reason think our real hair is not presentable or as beautiful to pair with the yeah nice evening it, it's not elegant enough it doesn't but she she loves everything that makes her her including her her natural hair shout yeah. out to jackie anna as our person who is making 
moves. moves. Hopefully we can meet you or interview you one day. We'd love to have you on Sister Sound Off. If you guys can think of who we should shout out, shine a light on next week, let us know either in the comments or hit us up on Instagram. Yeah, and one more thing I was going to say, congrats to her be because her candle line Forever Move has just been, well, they've been in the Sephora store, so if you guys want to shop or you can go on her website. But um, it's in Canada because Drake actually bought a candle from her. Not bought one from her, but apparently it went viral of him lighting a candle that looked like Forever Move, so she kind of went crazy. But Oh, what? Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's because she said they just, she saw the video. She was like, well, we just launched over there in Canada. We have a, we have a store over there. She, she was like, this house looks like it's in Toronto. And then um, the candle looks like one of her candles that he was lit, lighting up. And so she, she was kind of like giddy about it. It was really cute. Wow. But I was going to say they just, I don't know if they just, but they now have it available in Africa too. So it's her candle that is nationwide oh, now, honey. It's everywhere. So I know that she was super excited. I'm happy for her and nothing but much more success. Yes. For her. Yes. And another black business that we can't support. Okay. Y'all make sure y'all shop forever mood. Okay. Now we are about to actually get ready to close out this episode mm-hmm. of Sister Sound Off. Thank you guys for tuning in so far. But before we leave, of course, we got to leave you off with some positivity yet again. Yes. Danny the dog gives us something called Danny Stokes. Sprinkle a little bit of positivity for the rest of your week. Yes something that you can take with you guys to start it off and in honor of black history month i'm going to be doing a little black history quote of positivity every week and for this week i'm choosing this wonderful lady and her quote is from one of her legendary poems and it goes like this you may shoot me with your words you may cut me with your eyes you may kill me with your hatefulness but still like air I rise. Maya Angelou. Okay. Rest in peace to her. And what a great, great poet, author, writer, just a phenomenal woman. Phenomenally. For, yes. That's another one of her <laughs> great Phenomenal poems. woman. And not that you guys care, but I used to write poetry. I probably should get back into it. But she so should. I love writers and I grew up with Danny the doll was slash is uh i ain't kidding y'all an amazing writer slash poet she doesn't really write anymore how she used to but i'm sure that the gift is still deep down in her yeah she used to come up with the most creative wittiest just crazy like she could have been a a ghost writer honestly i came with his name yeah (laughs) but yeah yeah i should have been ghost writer but i was just going to say that yeah um and my angela was one of my biggest inspirations Nikki Giovanni and Mr. James Baldwin. That's another legend right oh, there. Oh, mm-hmm. please. I got James Baldwin on a sweatshirt. Put some big respect on Baldwin's name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, guys. So that is your quote. And that is our episode. Thank you guys for watching us. And if you are listening, thank you for listening. Yes. Be sure to subscribe. Uh, we, have, we have episode nine coming out um, next week. Make sure you guys tune into all our previous episodes that we've done so far. Yeah. If you want to see our outfits and details and just a little bit more behind the scenes of us and our personal lives, mm-hmm. definitely check us out on Instagram and TikTok. Um, Sister Sound Off, guys. Yes. And once again, I am Sophie Joe. <laughs> and I am Danny the Dog. And we will see you guys in our next one. Bow, bow, biggity, bow, bow, brrrta. Don't know what that means, so <laughs> shout out to designer. <laughs> Don't play with a dog, be the side